that she was open as a first time director. Um, and I just thought, well, you know, I'd love to support new talent and new people, but it didn't feel like it was new. It just felt like it was really smart and that we could make it a really interesting movie. And for me, it was really, uh, first of all, I needed the $300. <laughs> <laughs> was on together. How did you like that? Good evening, everybody. That was the movie. This is the q and I'm your moderator, CNN Sandro Manetti. Please join me in welcoming uh, to the stage uh, the people largely responsible for that fantastic film you've seen tonight, starting with writer-director Emma Forrest. And from the past, Jemima Clark. Lola Clark, Jennifer Gray, and Billy Crystal! Emma, let me start with you. Um, after years of being known as the best unproduced screenwriter in Hollywood, how does it feel to finally have a sold out opening night? So it's a very different feeling to have something that um, feels almost like releasing a cloud into the sky, you know, and, and just making peace with letting go and letting people see it the way they want to see it and feel the way they want to feel. There isn't a finality the way there is with a book. Well, congratulations on uh, so many things, a great script, so many memorable lines in this. What percentage of the lines in the script do you think you've spoken in real life over the years? Um, I mean, I've been keeping an insult diary from a very young age. <laughs> so, like a man. Yeah. yeah. And uh, now to the, the real life sisters who play sisters uh, in, in the movie. Um, so much of what's in the script is Emma's own story. So, when you're building the characters, to what extent are you doing an impersonation of her, and to what extent are you crafting an entirely original character? I felt like your character was definitely more of the the Emma character. I was doing an impersonation of Emma's sister I've never met before. Um, I uh, yeah, I've watched the way Emma spoke a bit, and um, I know that some of the the clothes and the mannerisms I would use a little bit, and then also I know Emma personally, so um, I I suppose some of that knowledge seeped into the performance bit, yeah. And Jennifer, another admirable thing about this movie is that every department head, editor, cinematographer was female. In your experience, how rare is that in the industry, and how does that speak to the current conversation in Hollywood? Really? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I just think that Emma is such a powerhouse and such an incredibly powerful feminine energy that I think it would just be weird if she didn't really capitalize on the fact that she can get the most amazing women and women. I mean, the women she has working around her are equal to her, and I just think she just attracts it because she's a powerful force. Yeah, girl! Mm -hmm. <laughs> Billy, great comic yeah. actors, make great dramatic actors, as you've proved time and again. But as Bradley Cooper has shown us, first time directors can really do great things. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, how, how did Emma win your faith as a first time director that you were in such good hands here? Well, I was a little on the fence about doing it, but I really loved the script and the character, what it could be. And we had a three hour breakfast um, where we just sort of said, okay, I'm going to do this, but can we do this? And I loved her mind. And, that she was open as a first time director. Um, and I just thought, well, you know, I'd love to support new talent and new people, but it didn't feel like it was new. It just felt like it was really smart and that we could make it a really interesting movie. And for me, it was really, uh, first of all, I needed the $300. <laughs> 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 I 
Um, but it was a chance to really create, and we came up with an interesting life for him that um, ended up on, you know, uh, there that affected other people. So it was, it was a great experience to do. It's the first time you've played a rabbi, although you were very rabbinical when you were eulogizing Muhammad Ali. Uh, is, the, is the character based on anyone in particular, and how did you basically work with them to, to craft the character? My, my rabbis were nothing like this guy. <laughs> Mine were all herring and pickle breath and, and <laughs> reform. No patience. <laughs> very, this is New York, very reform services were in Latin. Um, we, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Our Shabbos boy was the rabbi. No Jews here, I can see. Uh, but it's the, it's the, it's the uh, you know, it's the authority. It's the, it's the brain behind um, him that I liked and giving him his past life as a teenager. Um, interesting, we were doing, my wife and I were doing a genealogical um, search and the man who was our genealogist was an orthodox man. And I said, why did, why the orthodox? Why? Because it's so, you know, it's just very um, distant from anything that I've been you know, raised with. And he said, well, I was a teenager and I, my parents, we, we, I rebelled against them and I did the thing that I knew would piss them off the most. I went orthodox. <laughs> so that, that was sort of a little fuel for it, you know, at the same time. So it was just based on a rabbi that uh, we have used um, as a consultant in many ways. Uh, he uh, was a musician, he was a jazz musician, he had a different way about him and a different way to conduct the services, and so it was, he's in there a little bit too. <laughs> Jennifer, you're associated with movies that have brought people so much joy. This is uh, uh, a movie that really makes people think and feel. What did you feel when you were reading the script for the, for the first time and seeing the movie for the first time? Um, well, I read it and I thought, I just want to know this woman. And I read Emma's book, um, Your Voice in My Head, years before, and I loved it and I was a fan of hers. So when I read it, I thought, who is this chick? She just feels like what I want to be like as a writer or someone who should be my friend. And then we met and it was like that. So I just think she's super cool and smart. Yeah. Lola, was this the first time you've worked with your sister, and how was it going on this journey with her? It's actually not the first time, though Jemima doesn't remember the first time. <laughs> we were in an episode of Lena Dunham's web series, which was called Delusional Downtown Divas. We played a pair of evil British twins <laughs> um, who were artists. Evil. Um, it was fun, but yeah, it was a very different experience this time around because it wasn't, you know, four hours long. Um, and it was amazing, you know, it was really beautiful to watch Jemima work. She was working in a different way than I'd ever seen any actor work, and uh, it was very inspiring. Jemima, how do you prepare for sex scenes when your co-star is Christian Grey himself? Did that uh, add an extra level of frisson of excitement or fear to the role? I calmed him down. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I said, just relax. I know it's stressful and it's scary, and I know that you know it's not real sex. So don't you know, get all excited. And he calmed him, and um, he was acted really cool, and he, he figured it out. So, yeah. Really proud of him. And our sex scene was cut. Oh. <laughs> I can't wait for the DVD extra features, can you? <laughs> so Emma, what was it like directing a sex scene from you, the star of Fifty Shades of Grey? It was a nightmare. I never want to do that ever again. I never yes. want to, I ne I, and there was a technical, we came close to a technical error, because in all those scenes I called cut too soon, because I found it unbearable. Um, I never want to work with a cat again, and I never want to shoot another sex scene, ever. I will shoot cats having sex, but that's it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it it's nightmarish. I mean, for, for Jamie, it's so normal. It's so normal that when we gave him the modesty pouch to wear in the scene, he took it and went, oh my God, it said on the front, as worn by Jamie Dornan. It did. Like, he was a he took a picture, he was amazed, but he's so used to it. So he did. 
Did he wear a mask? Yeah. <laughs> 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 we now like to invite questions from the audience. If you have a question, please raise your hand. I'll take them in the order that I see them. Only have time for a couple. So now is your chance? Yes, fire away in the second round. Really? Yes. Uh, my question is about the, the final scene that you shot with, you know, between Nick and Andrea. Like, I love that scene because, like, we didn't see them, like, nude throughout the whole movie. And there was something about that scene that was so beautiful because yeah. it was just, like, a vulnerable moment between those two. Because, like, they're giving their, like, their real yeah. selves and laying down all of their, their walls. Yeah. So I, I just thought that was a really beautiful scene. I was like, it's, like you know, that was the intended yeah, I'll just repeat for anyone at the back who didn't hear. Um, she was asking you to speak about the final scene of the movie and how wonderful, tender, and unique it was. Um, and and it, hopefully there is fewer payoff to the way Jemima's dressed throughout the movie because it's all you realise at that moment. It's all armour. It's all defence. It's all pretend. And you see her standing in a different way. Um, and with Jamie, I remember saying, Jamie has like 173 children with his wife. And I said, when you look at Jemima in this scene, I want it to be the expression on your face the first time you see your wife naked after she's given birth. And that's where all of that came from for him. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. I was wondering what other kind of unique or unexpected challenges arose and how did you what unique, unexpected challenges arose, and how did you overcome them? Can, for, me, for me, or for anyone? For anyone? I mean, the, the the best challenge for me came from Billy, which was to um, deepen this role that before Billy came on, it wasn't there the way it is now, um, because all the characters are either versions of me or versions of my ex-husband. The rabbi was the character that was a figure of like, obsession and fantasy and Billy had me do rewrites, had me answering questions and usually as a writer you're so resentful of that, you're like they just want me to rewrite this to get it to become worse than it already is but Billy's questions were so useful, it was a big challenge but um, we got him and that just the script became so much stronger because of the questions Billy asked Oh, collective shyness. Okay, let's, uh, oh, well, there we go. Yes, fire away. I was just going to say, my comment, it, it's just really more of a comment. I thought it was really nice, like, because when I, when I originally came into the movie, I kind of, like, was thinking it was going to be, like, more kind of like a romance type thing, like, you know, like the typical thing where it's like a girl meets a guy and they're, like, trying not to be together in a relationship. But then when I was watching, I started realizing that it's actually basically about how like we hide who we really are. Like everybody puts on a mask, like yeah. they're so together. Yeah. But then like on like in your moments when you're by yourself, it's yeah. like I'm actually falling apart, but nobody else sees yeah. this happening to me. And I love that line that you had with the cat. Like I know it was so simple, but when she said, if you keep licking the wound, it's it not going to yeah. heal. And I feel like that's what everybody kept yeah. doing throughout the movie. Yeah. They kept going back to things that happened in their past. And they never really got over it, so it kept on reopening and festering, so they could never really come back into who they were in the present. Nice. Yeah. 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 Do you want to speak about the reality of the of the, uh, the characters yeah. that you represent? I guess not. Um, what about the uh, what about the decision for um, uh, for Ben Mendelsohn? Uh, actually not to play like a horrible bad guy, but actually to be, you know, a nice guy and charmer. And also, it's interesting with the older man, younger woman relationship. I hadn't seen it portrayed like that on, on screen before. It wasn't uh, salacious, you know, it was nice. It wasn't really, how, how did you feel about it? How refreshing was it to get such a different kind of dynamic between those characters? Um, it, it was really interesting. I mean, I never really had a relationship with anyone that was actually older than me. I, I feel like with older men, I get really scared and make them Feel like my father in some way, <laughs> but I, I think that his character was so remarkable and and odd, and I know it nauseated him a great deal to play somebody that would say something like, "Oh, it's so beautiful how you women cleanse yourself." <laughs> so I think there's some collective healing to be had in seeing someone that's such a great villain be such a nauseating nice guy. And how did you feel to be an object of desire? Really good. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's nice work. Yeah. $300 well spent right there. <laughs> yes, go ahead. So is there a metaphorical connection between licking the wounds and eating the cucumbers? Is there a metaphorical connection between licking the wounds and eating the cucumbers? I think so. Yeah. 
think that's for everybody here to decide for themselves. <laughs> Uh, yes. First off, I just want to say I, I enjoy this one so much, and I appreciate what you guys all bring to bring to the screen. My question is for Emma. I know you do from a lot of your life experiences. How long? I'm sure. How long was the writing process for you? And you know, now we sit here today watching. I mean, it was. There was quite a, a distance between finishing it and it coming out for various reasons, but. I wrote it pretty fast because I was trying to make sense of the situation I was in and the great gift of being a writer is that you can create alternate narratives when life isn't going the way that you want it to be, you just write it a different way in your script. Um, but I wrote it probably in about six weeks, I think. Seeing the movie is wonderful. You know, we've all got great stories uh, in us. You know, Emma told hers, and with this fantastic cast and team, she's given us a movie that will live long in the memory. Ladies and gentlemen, the team from Untogether!